you see Paramount? When you make a shitty movie, you gotta call on Leonard Nimoy. He'll get your ass out of a tight spot in the best way possible, and I mean that dearly. Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, a.k.a. the final film of the original series. Ugh, such a good way to go out. No, 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 scratch that. Such a great way to go out. This is the third best Star Trek movie in the original series. Okay, so you can tell what my top four movies are. Star Trek, The Wrath of Khan, Sir, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Star Trek IV. Three, I mean, Star Trek 4, this one, and then Star Trek 3. This movie feels like the conclusion. It wraps everything up. Leonard Nimoy comes back as executive producer. Not only that, he also helps write this story. Thank God. If only Leonard Nimoy wrote the first one, maybe not the second one, because the second one was awesome, all the way till here, it would have been a perfect original series of movies. Because not only... That he helped write this movie. The director of Star Trek 2 directed this movie. Yes! God damn it, yes! And this movie is awesome. This is the first Star Trek movie ever to use, really use CGI to its advantage. And it's good. The budget is a bit higher on this one because this is the final movie. You might as well go all out for the final film, basically. And this really is the apology for Star Trek 5 and it really does feel like it. So, the plot of this movie is the Klingons are basically going to get stinked. They probably got like at least 50 more years of life left or 50 more years of life lifespans left or whatever, whatever you want to call it. So basically they're going to stink like like the wells from Star Trek 3, I mean 4. So, the Klingons have issued a peace treaty with the Federation, okay? Captain Kirk, however, hates the Klingons for the events that happened in Star Trek 3. If you've seen Star Trek 3, you know what I'm talking about. So he actually has like a almost a racist tone against the Klingons at this point. And he has to be he has to put on a good face to um, go to a meeting where you know the ambassador, I think, of the Klingons will be there. Okay. Not only that. But somebody beyond Kirk and the Klingons' control is looking for a militaristic um, trip contribution or whatever. How, however you want to say it. I keep forgetting the name of it. But whatever. He sets up Kirk and the crew of the Enterprise by um, firing upon their ship. Which may look like the Enterprise did it. But there's something else going on. And they actually kill the main guy in the Klingon uh, army that's trying to do this peace treaty. And basically the Klingons are on edge again and basically set them off and try and start another full-scale war between the Federation and the Klingons. This movie, I like this. I, nope, 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 nope. I love this movie. Okay? This movie does everything right. This is a mystery science fiction thriller action movie. This movie has more action in it than I think almost all of them. Kind of. I think since Star Trek II, this one has more action. And I love the up upgrades they gave some of the, the the crew. For example, Sulu is now captain of his own ship, the Excelsior. And he offers his hand and help when um, Kirk and them are in trouble. And it's awesome. Okay? The the throwdown between three ships at the end of this movie's awesome. Okay. <laughs> but not only that, I think this is the first Star Trek movie that I've seen. We actually have a shape-shifting character in here. That was kind of odd to see in a Star Trek movie, but you know what? It's Star Trek. Fuck it. Fuck it. Okay? I ain't gotta say nothing about the acting. You all know the acting is top-notch. Of course. Man, of course. Leonard Nimoy also steps his game up since he has to write himself as awesomeness as well. And this is the first time I actually see him use two hands to fucking read somebody's mind. I was getting ready to say, you're going to nearly kill this motherfucker? But it was awesome. Two-handed mind read for the first time ever I think I've ever seen him do. 
awesome. Fucking awesome. Should have killed that motherfucker too, but you have to see that movie to find out why he should have killed that motherfucker. <laughs> but, uh, yes, it, it, uh, it, it just comes full circle, man. It feels, it really feels complete. You know what I mean? To see all these years of these people on your TV screens for the better part of almost 11 to 10 years on the big screen to come to a conclusion the way it does and the even more sad part about it is Gene Roddenberry saw this movie but he died a few days after viewing this movie so that was even more sad but yes without a doubt the undiscovered country is an A great great movie and I love a couple of nods in this movie let's get started with one of the creators I think her name is Mary Jo Slater well guess what not only she's one of the creators of this movie she actually inputted one of her family members in here and this is the first time I ever heard about this her fucking son Christian Slater what <laughs> and he's in here he's all young and shit I'm like oh shit it's Christian Slater and that was her fucking son holy shit well we don't know who his mom is <laughs> so that's even more awesome what's even more epically awesome is the nod to the next generation because by at this point I think the next generation was pop maybe still on air at this point probably going on maybe it's Maybe it's fifth or sixth season. I think Next Generation came on in 87, if I'm not mistaken. So by this point, in the movie, there is a character named Colonel Worf. Played by Michael Doran. Who plays Worf in The Next Generation. He plays an ancestor to himself. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, that's fucking awesome. That's why I fucking love this movie. Leonard Nimoy, again, you had to take the foot out of Paramount's asses and bring Star Trek back the way it is. Thank you. Fucking. <sighs> Do the same thing for Star Trek 3. The re the newer Star Trek 3, because that would be awesome. And I'll explain why when I get to Generations. But as for now, let me know what you guys think about the Undiscovered Country down below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? And out of all of them, what is your order of the original Star Trek franchise? Let me know down below. I'll catch y'all later.